Hey, Matthew Root here. In this quick video, we're going to be talking about the difference in working hard versus working smart. So with that being said, let's just dive right into this, okay? So let's say that you need to earn $4,000 per month to cover your lifestyle. We are going to look at two very different ways to make $4,000 per month. Option number one, this is what most people do, okay? They go out and they get a job and they trade their time for money. An average work week is about 40 hours a week or breaks down to eight hours per day. But remember, you also have to drive to work, get up in the morning, get dressed, drive back home. So it ends up being much more than that, but the average working week is 40 hours. So let's break it down. $4,000 per month is $1,000 per week. At 40 hours per week, that comes out to $25 an hour. You need a, tw you need a job that's gonna at least make you $25 per hour if you're working full time. In this example, we're not gonna include taxes, but just remember, you will lose roughly 40% of your income after all taxes are paid. So we're talking about all taxes, you know, federal and state income, your FICA, your property, consumption. That's just the name of a few. But if you break everything down, you're, you're losing about 40% of your income, if not more. So keep that in the back of your head. So technically, you would need to be making $35 an hour just to have a net take home of $25 an hour. But to keep this example simple, let's stick to the $25 an hour example, okay? But let's look at another option. Option number two, this is what the wealthy people do, okay? They go and they build or they buy assets that produce cash flow, okay? So here's some examples. Rental properties, owning ATM machines, dividend paying stocks, owning a business, tax lien certificates, and much, much more. The whole goal here is owning an asset that produces you cash flow or appreciates in a certain amount of time to where you can cash out and live off of that appreciation. So in this example, we're going to talk about owning ATM machines, okay? You've probably seen these and literally you'll be surprised at how much passive income you can generate from these simple ATM machines, okay? So let's take an average and say that each ATM machine makes you $500 per month in net income. So your net take home pay per machine is $500 per month. How many ATM machines do you need to make $4,000 per month? Well, let's do some math here. $4,000 divided by 500 is eight ATM machines. Eight, not 20, not 50, not 100. Eight ATM machines, $4,000 per month, eight ATM machines. Just let that sink in. Okay. So how much time does it take to manage eight ATM machines per week? Well, roughly four to seven hours per week. That's, that's it. And how do I know? Because I've managed 15 machines in under six hours per week. So four to seven could be exaggerating. So it does not take much time at all. So let's break this down. If you're making $4,000 per month working seven hours a week, how much is that per hour? That is $142 per hour that you are making. So in this example, you're making $142 an hour versus $25 an hour, okay? So what about taxes? Yes, you still get taxed on this income, okay? But remember, you are now running a business. So you can take advantage of all the tax deductions that are available, bringing your tax burden from 40% down to roughly 15 or 20 percent. How, you might ask? Tax strategy is a whole different lesson within itself, so we're not going to go deep into that, but through asset depreciation, itemizing your expenses, and maximizing deductions, this is easily doable. So just understand, you can bring your tax bill a lot lower just by being a business owner. Okay, what about the startup capital to buy the ATM machines? You know, you're wondering, hey, that, that sounds great, but how much do I need to get this, the, this business going? Well, let's look at this logically, okay? If you want to land a $48,000 a year job, like most people, they're going to go to college and get a degree. Like, like to get that kind of income, you, you usually need college, okay? Yes, there's exceptions out there, but we are generalizing here. And the average college grad is making $50,000 a year. You can go check the stats right below. But don't forget that 40% tax that you're going to pay. So that 50 grand, it turns into about 30 grand, which is not fun. But anyway, okay. So how much are you investing into school? Again, go check these facts. These are, you know, different types of college programs, you know, public two-year college, um, public four-year, um, private four-year, in-state, out-of-state, all that stuff. I never went to college, so I, I never really looked at these numbers um, until I started doing some research and realized how expensive it actually was to go to school. So we're going to use the example 
of a public four-year college that is in your state. So on average, that's about $9,410. So you times that over four years, and that's totaling $37,000. Now, 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 remember, you know, this is the, the bare necessities. Like, you know, you're, you're living there for four years. You're going to spend money on food, going out, and all sorts of other things in that time frame. This is just for school. And also, don't forget about the interest paid on the loans if you took out student loans. Okay, so you sacrificed roughly $40,000 in four years of your life, which the latter, the four years of your life is actually worth a lot more that you're sacrificing than the $40,000. But... That's a whole different rant. So when you graduate, you are now quote unquote qualified to sell 40 hours of your life every week to make about $50,000 per year. That's, that's basically what you bought into. You, you went, you spent four years, you paid all this money. So that way you have a certificate and you're, you're in society, you are qualified to hold this position so that you can take your time, you can sell it to your employer and you can be compensated on that. This consists of working 40 plus hours a week for the next 40 to 50 years if you do your retirement planning perfectly, which most people don't. But anyways, 40 to 50 years of your life for something you don't own, don't control, you can't keep, and you can't pass it down to your kids. While paying the highest percentage in taxes and hoping, just hoping that your 2 to 5% annual raise can keep up with the pace of inflation, which is on average a reported 3% a year, but most experts think that it's definitely much more than that. So doesn't this sound exciting? That's a great plan, right? No, no, no. It's a terrible plan. It, it just, I mean, people do it all the time. It's because they're guided and they're told to do it. But there's a smarter way, okay? There's a smarter way where you can earn more money, work less, pay less in taxes, and build an asset you own and control. So one day, one day you can sell it or pass it down to your kids or donate it to charity. Whatever it is that you want to do with this asset, you can do with it because you control this asset, okay? So let's take that $40,000 and instead of taking that $40,000 and going and investing in college in four years of my life, let's go and let's go buy eight ATM machines. Here's the cost breakdown. Each ATM machine on average is about 2,500 bucks. You need some money to put into the machine, so let's say $1,500 to fill each machine. That comes out to $5,000 is the total cost per ATM. So 5,000 times eight is $40,000. Okay, what is the ROI? What's the return on the investment? If each ATM machine makes $500 a month of net profit, net income, that's $6,000 a year. $6,000 a year times eight machines is $48,000 a year. That's 120% annual ROI, annual return on your investment. Okay, like, and, and think about this, the S&P 500, you know, if you were to invest in an S&P 500 index fund, the top 500 market cap co companies in the United States Stock Exchange, that has historically averaged eight to 10% per year on returns. So we're talking about 120% versus an 8 per, eight to 10%, which is what the market has been averaging over the past 100 years. This is pretty ridiculous, okay? So the return on the investment in the first year, all your money is made back and you are now in profit mode. But remember, you just built a business and businesses are worth money, right? Well, because you can sell them, you can you can sell your business. You built something that other people want. So let, let's look at this. What is your net worth after you built your business? Well, let's evaluate your business. So your total assets, eight ATM machines, valued at twenty two hundred dollars each, is or seventeen thousand six hundred dollars total. And you might be questioning. Well, 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 you just said that each ATM machine cost twenty five hundred dollars. Yes, it does. But when you own a business, you get to depreciate your assets. So remember, you can depreciate them in one year for tax benefits. So that is the actual value of them. But you also got that tax credit or tax write-off, so you can save money there. And your earnings, your annual net income is $48,000 per year. So using a four times annual multiple on this business, and that's how these businesses are evaluated. And you know, this is this is basically saying that you built this right, meaning 
all your locations have five plus year contracts and you built the business the correct way, well, you take that $48,000, you times it by four, you add the, the business's assets, which is $17,600, and you're at looking at over a $200,000 evaluation on your company, okay? So your net worth from building this business is over $200,000. Think about that. You built this business, not only is it providing you with over $48,000 in cash flow every single year, but it is also worth over $200,000 that you can borrow against, you can leverage, whatever it is you want to do with it, it's worth that much money. So you can keep the business and enjoy the passive income or you can cash out and sell it, it's totally up to you. So let's let's compare the two, okay? So option one, you got your job, option two is um, a small ATM business, okay? So the investment, well, for the job, you need four years to go to college plus $40,000 to invest in your education. With the ATM business, yep, you still need about $40,000, but you only need about one year to invest into it. You know, you know, given that, you know, hopefully you're not lazy, you know, obviously it only takes one year to really build this thing if you go out there and you make it happen. So break even. Well, option number one, your job, it's going to take at least five years. You know, majority of people don't graduate in four years. It takes them longer. But this is saying that for the first four years, you went to college. And then when you got out of college, you automatically landed that high paying job and you didn't spend any of that income and you paid it all right back, which we all know is not the case but I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt, so let's say five years. Option number two, one to two years. How many hours spent per week? 40 plus hours per week for option one with your job versus five to seven for your ATM business. Your income averages about $48,000 a year, $23 an hour, um, or $48,000 a year at $142 an hour. Big difference. Your taxes, you know, if you have a job, you're paying the highest amount of taxes. It, that's just how it is. If you're middle class, you have a job, you are you are paying an extremely high percentage in taxes. So around 40%, but with the ATM business or with any business, if, as long as you, you, you do your taxes right, it's going to be more around 20%, okay? And your net worth. Well, for the job, it's definitely under 40K. It's probably more like negative, but it's not that good. Your net worth with the business uh, about $200,000. So you see how these stack up. One, it's less work, it's more money, and it's it, it, you make that business worth more overall, or you can work harder, earn less, and pay more in taxes. So what option do you want to go with? It's kind of a no-brainer, don't you think? You know, and I want to point out that you can do this with many other businesses or asset classes. You know, you can have rental properties that are producing you cash flow. You can buy dividend paying stocks. You can buy, you know, you can trade stocks. You can have ta um, tax lien certificates. You can own a business. Like the ATM business is not the only way to do this. Understand there are many, many, many different ways to duplicate what we just went over. But I personally think the ATM business is the easiest business to get started and to apply the concept that we just covered, you know, on, on how to work smart and not hard. So hint, this is why I use it for the example, because it simply works, it makes sense, and the barrier to entry for this business is very, very low. So I hope you got some value out of this short video. And if you're interested in learning more about the ATM business and how you can start your own, well, you know, I got some resources for you. You can download our free step-by-step -step blueprint on how to start your ATM business. That This literally walks you through step-by-step -step what you need to do, file your LLC, get your license, get the machines, the whole nine yards, and simply go to atmempire.biz forward slash blueprint okay or you can just go check out our website and you'll see the button on there at atmempire.biz there's a lot of great resources on there we hold webinars very frequently so you can sign up for one of those but another option join our facebook group for more training go on to facebook and search atm empire group and you're going to have to just add yourself to that and that is a community of like-minded business owners that are going out there making it happen so you can network with people in the industry stay up to date on industry news and simply learn if one if this is the right business model for you and two, how you can get started. With that being said, I hope you decide to work smart in life and do not work your life away on something that you don't own, can't sell, can't pass down to your kids and simply just making someone else rich. Okay, go out there, work smart and make it happen. I'll talk to you guys later.